Oh man. Ah, this fog is so intense and the light is so, so beautiful. Oh my God, I love it. And also no, the title of this video, it's not clickbait. I am officially no longer an official Fuji X photographer, but oh my God, this fog. Ah, woo. So, <laughs> uh, the fog is starting to lift and now it's just turning into a whole lot of wet and I'm definitely spending far too much time wiping off this lens and my glasses to actually be able to see properly. Not only that, the Panasonic G7 that I'm shooting this video on is definitely not weather sealed. So with that, uh, we're going to move this into the studio, but fortunately through the power of cinema, I'll see you guys there in a second. And just like that, we're at the studio, nice and warm and dry. Now. I honestly think one of my favorite parts about uh, doing those super easy transitions like that is that my children, they're still very young, so when they see the videos and they see that, they're always like, oh my god, how did you get to the studio so quick? I don't know. Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. Now, I guess the easiest way to break this down is to put it into a timeline. A couple of years ago, I made a video about how to become a Fuji X photographer. Now, in November of 2017, I actually left the Fuji X photographer program. Now. Today's date is September 2018, so it's been almost a year since I left. And I never actually intended to make this video, but there's a few changes that happened to the program which led to me leaving. And so I thought this would be a nice follow-up into you know, what the new regulations and rules are for becoming an ex-photographer. And also there are still a lot of people that are emailing me or have been emailing me asking me to do interviews as an ex-photographer, asking me my opinions on the different new gear that's coming out and whether or not I've got a chance to use it yet, all these different things. And so I just wanted, it, rather than sending out that email a hundred times saying, you know what, I'm not actually a Fuji X photographer anymore, I don't have access to this gear, everything like that, I thought I'd just make a video that I can just like point people to, you guys here, and uh, you know, just make my life a little bit more streamlined, a little bit easier if you will. Now when I left Fuji, there was no drama. It wasn't a big falling out or anything like that. We didn't part on bad terms. We're still friends, if you will. You know, I can still call them and say, hey, you know, how you guys are doing? Let's grab a beer. What's coming down the line? And they'll say, well, you're not a photographer for us anymore, so we can't tell you. But anyways, we're still friends. I'm gonna talk to you guys about the, the things that, you know, were bumps in the road for me and the things that I just couldn't get by. If you watch this combined with the other video that I did about how to become a Fuji X photographer, if you put the two together, you'll see what essentially are the new rules and regulations for joining the program if it's something that you're looking into. But I just, I, I really wanna, you know, reiterate that Fuji and I are still totally cool. And I have no issues, you know, with, with the new rules that they came out with. They're a business and they're looking at it from a business perspective. Just from myself, being a photographer and an entrepreneur, there was just different things that didn't sit for what I'm trying to build. And just when two you know, entities kind of, they, they bunt heads and, and can't seem to grow together, it's just better if they go their separate ways. So let's just talk a little bit about what those issues were. Now, last time I talked to you guys about joining the program, I told you that you didn't have to shoot strictly Fuji gear. And as of now, that has changed. And again, I can't fault Fuji for that. They essentially want people in the program who are, are very, very dedicated to the system. Now, when I first joined it, you know, they didn't have, they didn't have the selection of cameras that they do now. They didn't have, you know, such a large lineup. So they were a lot more lenient to you using other gear. Fuji now has the, the stance that we have enough cameras to essentially suit every type of photography. So if you're not on board with using our gear for everything, then you probably shouldn't be on board. And I don't disagree with that at all. Just for myself, kind of the, the concept that was pitched to me was, well, you can sell all of your Nikon gear and then buy all Fuji gear at a bit of a discount and then you can be a Fuji X photographer. And that just, it didn't work for me. There's a few different things. A, the Nikon, my D800s, they still have better dynamic range. They tether, which is a huge thing for me. So much cleaner. Now, I shoot with the X-Pro2, and I know a lot of people are gonna say, well, what about the X-T series? 
I tried it, I hated it. I just, I, I gave that camera like a full two weeks of just shooting every day with it. And I just, there was something about the handling in it, the way that the camera felt, it just, it felt awful in my hands. And that's just, you know, my personal opinion. Now, I'm not going to switch to a system that I use as much as I do in terms of taking photos to a system that doesn't feel good in my hands. These are tools, that's all they are to me is, I look at them as tools and if those tools don't feel good, I'm going to change to something else. So the XT series was just, it wasn't in the cards for me. So tethering did come to the X Pro 2, but in a really roundabout way. Now I tethered at Capture One. I know that, you know, Fuji has the tethering to Lightroom, but honestly Capture One is just so much better when it comes to tether. I still do a lot of my editing work and uh, color grading work in Lightroom, but when it comes to the actual tethered capture, Capture One is just so much faster and way more reliable than Lightroom will ever or has ever been in that regard. So it's what I go to. And when it came to the X-Pro2, the only way that you could actually tether to Capture One is if you used a hot folder. Now what a hot folder is, is Capture One is essentially just watching a folder on your computer. And as files get added to that folder, it re essentially recycles and, and shows that image. In theory, that works. But the problem with that and with me is that I often do a little bit of a color grade and different things like that on the initial image. So if I have an art director or a client that's looking at the images, they get a much better idea of what that image is gonna look like as a final product, be it if I'm shooting black and white or if I'm doing a little bit of color work on it, that kind of thing. I know what it's gonna look like in my head, but I can't take that out of my head and put it into my client's head. So they need to visually see it. Now with a hot folder, there is no way, or at least I haven't found one, where if you take that image, all the color grading work that you did transfers to the next image, like it would if the camera was recognized natively. When it captures into a hot folder, it just goes back to your standard flat raw. So the only way that I can actually show what the image should look like is to select all those images after and then apply it. It's just a huge pain in the ass. It doesn't work for me. It's not something that I'm interested in doing. I'm not going to switch to a system that isn't as fluid as the one I already have. Anybody that has seen me talk about the Fuji and the X-Pro2 has known that's been a huge hang up of mine. I love the way that camera feels. I love the way the X-Pro2 feels in my hand, but as a professional and somebody who shoots a lot of studio and somebody who shoots a lot tethered, that's always been the major hang up on that camera. And it's always drove me nuts that it's considered like the X-Pro line, if you will. And it seems handicapped in so many different ways in those regards that the X-T series seems to be picking up on. Now also people are gonna say, well, what about the X-H? I think it's the X-H1. I've never actually held one. I left the program before that camera came into existence, so I've never actually held one in my hand. My understanding is it's essentially kind of the same size as, you know, or maybe just a tiny bit smaller than my digital SLRs anyway. So again, I'm not really saving anything by switching to that. And again, I just don't see the, there's, there's too much headache in selling a bunch of gear and then buying a bunch of gear in order just to remain a part of this program. And of course, Everyone's gonna ask, well, what about the GFX? You know, the camera that was designed for commercial photographers, that kind of thing. Now, again, beautiful camera, but it's not as well-rounded as the D800 is in terms of its ability to, you know, shoot action, shoot portraits, different things like that. Yes, the GFX has better dynamic range, all of those types of things, but I also like to have at least two of each camera body so that if something happens and something fails on set, I'm not just left, you know, holding nothing and trying to explain to my client, oh, sorry, you know, my, my camera's done broke. So to have two GFXs in my bag, uh, now outside of having to shoot strictly Fuji gear, the way the program was run specifically in Canada had actually changed quite a bit from when I started to what it is now. When I first started in this Fuji X photographer program, it was a small core group of photographers that, you know, Fuji had conversations with. They would lend gear to and get, you know, information back from and different things like that in order to make these cameras better. But what it ended up turning into was Fuji trying to place a Fuji X photographer in every single province. And I understand the benefit of it. You know, when you have something going on in said province, you have a Fuji X photographer there as a representative of the brand. And it sounds great in theory, but in practice, what you end up having is essentially an oversaturation of these photographers. And it takes a little bit of the shine off of uh, the once was what I felt prestige in being a Fuji X photographer when it almost felt like it was starting to become, hey, we need somebody in your province that has a, that, that can be a Fuji X photographer. And you happen to have a Fuji X camera, so we 
would you like to be a Fuji X photographer? And like I said, I completely get it. I understand what the, the thought process is behind it, but it just felt like the, the work that was starting to come out of the program wasn't the best representation of what these cameras can be capable of. And because of that, I feel like it actually started to kind of lower the bar on what the Fuji X photographer program essentially was and is now. And one thing that wasn't, it's, it's not a huge deal, but it was just something that I, I just refused to do. And that was, they, have you ever, well, I mean, obviously I'm sure you have seen the, the Fuji X photographer logo if you're watching this video. And it's just so bad. I don't, I don't know, I, I'm sorry, but it looks like it was something that was created in a 14 year old's graphic designer course. It, it just, I don't know, it, it has never sat well with me. They designed the most beautiful cameras, but then they've got this logo that is just awful. And not only that, they wanted me to take that logo and they wanted me to put it in my email badges. They wanted me to put it on my social media platforms. And again, just to kind of announce, hey, I am a Fuji X photographer, but that just, it never sat well with me. I, I'm not a Fuji employee. I am Nathan Elson photography, not Nathan Elson Fuji X photographer. So it was just something that I just, I straight up just couldn't get on board with. And then the last thing that kind of follows that same and then the last thing that kind of follows that same line of reasoning was they started putting in regulations or stipulations, I should say, in the amount of content that you're creating that is relative to Fuji and the products that they are releasing. Again, I understand the, the concept behind it, but it was just, again, another thing that I, I couldn't agree to. And that officially wraps up why I'm no longer a Fuji X photographer. Now, if you guys have any questions about anything or if there's anything that you feel that I missed, use the comments box below. That's what it's there for. I do apologize for making another video here in the studio. I did want to make this one a little bit more dynamic, but as you saw at the beginning of the video, Mother Nature, she, well, she just wasn't playing along. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching this far. If you guys did like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet already, please subscribe. I'd very much appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Shh.